Welcome back to mini tutorials for Adobe InDesign. In this tutorial, this is two of 20, we'll be covering placing and fitting images. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about selecting colors, and we're also going to cover some of the basics of text boxes. Uh, just as a reminder, there is a companion book to this series, which is available on Amazon.com. So let's get InDesign open and start taking a look at this. Let's, let's begin by creating a simple layout. I'm going to go File, New, document right here. I'm going to open up this document. I, this uh, dialog, I'm going to create five pages. I'm going to turn facing pages off. Um, my page size here, I can set that. I'm going to leave it a letter for right now. Turn my orientation to landscape. And in this case, I'm going to give it two columns. And just a reminder, those columns are guidelines. I'm going to say OK on that. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'm using uh, Command minus or Control minus on a PC. Uh, so you can see the entire layout here. Uh, my zoom tool, I can use that to zoom back in like that. Uh, there's also one trick of this. If I double click on my zoom tool, that brings it right to 100%. So it's a very quick way of getting things back to 100%. First task that we're going to do is we're going to place some images. So I'm going to go to File, Place. And Adobe uh, InDesign is a little different than some other programs. This is not like Word where you embed the image inside of the document. It actually creates links to the original artwork. Uh, and you need to be careful uh, if you move a folder or you know, move the images around later, it can break those links. There is a tool that we'll look at a little bit later to check for broken links. So I'm going to use Place. And I'm just going to grab some pictures. I'm holding my Shift key down to select a bunch of pictures. And I'm going to hit Open. And as I do that, we'll zoom out a little bit here. What that does is that loads multiple pictures that are attached to my cursor. And each time I click, it's going to offload one of those pictures like that. So I've got one more here. I'll put that right there. Okay. So let me erase these, and I'll show you a couple more things with that. So just as a reminder, this is File, Place. I'm just going to select, we'll select two pictures this time. So we'll select these two. I'm going to click on Open. And I'm going to place one picture there and one picture there. Now as I want to move things around in my layout, I need to be on my black arrow selection tool. So on the black arrow tool, I'm going to click on my object here. And I'm going to move that up into my layout. And you may notice these, these pink lines are kind of magnetized. They are snap to lines. So as I get close to the line, it's going to snap that image right onto the line. Um, we have little resizing that we can do here. And you may notice that as I resize that, it's resizing the bounding box. It's not resizing the picture. Uh, there's one more little step that I need to do to resize the picture. Uh, to resize the picture, I'm going to do a right click or a control click on a Mac. And that brings up this little contextual menu. I can do fitting. So I'm going to do fitting, fill frame proportionally, bring it up like that. Let me do that with the other image here. So again, I'm on my black arrow tool. I'll do my selection. I'm going to select the image. I'm going to bring it up to this side of the page here. And I need to thank my friend uh, Edie Howe, who is a fantastic photographer, who's given me uh, permission to show these, pi these particular pictures that she's taken of the bristlecone pines. So I'm going to resize the bounding box and drag that down. And then again, I need to actually fit the picture so that it fits inside the new size of the bounding box. So again, I'm going to right click. I'm going to find fitting, which is right in the middle of that dialog. And then I'm going to fill the frame proportionally like that. So just a couple quick reminders when you're bringing in pictures, remember to use File, Place. Alright, let's go on to the next topic in this series. Let's talk a little bit about how to pick colors using InDesign. Uh, down here on the bottom of the toolbar, we have two little boxes. We have a fill color and we have a stroke color. Um, this little Double arrow, double headed arrow here that allows you to swap those two colors. So when I press it like that, this red line means no color, the black means a, a stroke color of black. If 
I swap that, then my fill color is black and my stroke color is set to no color. Now, if I want to work in something besides black and white, I need to do a couple more things. So let's start there, and I'm just going to create a few shapes that we can play around with as we start taking a look at colors. So I'm going to use my black arrow. I'm going to select my first shape. You can see it's selected with the little squares around it. And then I'm going to double click on my fill color. When I double click on my fill color, that's going to open up a color picker where I can start uh, collecting colors that I'm going to use for this particular object. So I'm going to select blue. Let's change this to blue. And now I want to pick a stroke color. So I'm going to double click on my stroke colors, come here, and pick kind of a yellow to go with that. And the stroke color is there. You can't see it because it's very tiny. So let me make one little change here. Up at the options, when I'm uh, on this particular tool, I have the options to change my stroke. Uh, this is my fill color here. This is my stroke color here. And then within the options, I can change what that stroke looks like. And I can also change the weight of the stroke. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to change the weight of the stroke. So I'm going to make that large so you can really see it. Now, one other clever little tool uh, for moving color around is this little guy right here. This is called the eyedropper tool. I'm going to click on that. And when I do that, I can pick up information from one object. So I'm picking up actually both the stroke color and the fill color. And then I can drop it on another object. Okay. So I'm just going to click off here. When the tool is empty like that, that means it's ready to pick up something. So when I click on this, you may notice that the tool changes. It now has kind of a black fill on it. It's moved the other direction. And then I can go to another object and click on that and drop that information there. So let's make another change to this. So I'm going to change that fill color maybe to a red this time. We have that up here. Um, I'm going to click off on the pasteboard to make this empty. Click on the object. Click on another object. And then I can drop that. Um, very handy. The last topic in this tutorial are some of the basics of text boxes. So let me show you kind of how to get around with text boxes. Um, I'm using my type tool. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to just create two very simple text boxes. Now InDesign is a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, it's not like most word processing programs where you can just start typing and the text will appear. You do need to create text boxes first and tell InDesign where you want that text to sit. Um, as I come in here, I can click on that. I can use a, a fill with placeholder text, which is here in type, the second to last option, fill with placeholder text. And that's going to put some kind of fake Latin into my document like that. I'm going to take some of this out. I'm going to make the text a little bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and up the size on this like that. Um, the options up here at the top should be fairly familiar if you've worked with word processors, but let me walk through them very quickly. Uh, you need to be on the type tool and you need to highlight text if you're planning to make some changes. So I'm going to highlight some text and I can let me just walk through these boxes very quickly. We can make changes in the fonts face um, right here. The style here, this is frequently used for things like bold, um, italic, condensed, semi-bold. Those are all styles if you need to change those, you can change those with that second box right there. This top one right here, this is the size of the font. The bottom one, this is what's called letting. Letting has to do with the, uh, the distance between different lines. So for example, if I take this and increase the letting to 72 points, um, I have a lot more space between those lines than if I had it smaller. Or I could take that letting and decrease it. Uh, we could make it 12 points, and then that type would overlap like that. Um, if you're not sure on the letting, you can always set it to auto, and the computer will make a calculation based on the font size. So play around with that. I'm going to highlight a little more text right here. This is what's called all caps, so it's going to change it to capitals. Uh, this is called small caps. Oops, let me get in the right place here. Small caps, like that. Uh, this is superscript, subscript, underline, and strike through. Um, these right here, uh, this is called kerning, 
and kerning has to do with the space between letters. So if I put the cursor between two letters like that, um, I can increase that spacing, make it a lot wider, or I can snug things up, make that uh, a lot more narrow, like that. Oh, I'm doing the right one there, like that. I'm going to set that back to zero. Um, tracking is doing kind of the same thing, but it's doing it for a full line of text. So I'm going to highlight a line of text, and then if I set the tracking, it's going to adjust the spacing, but it's going to adjust that spacing across the entire line. So we can take it like that. Let me make it really narrow so you can see it kind of pushed up like that. And that's working with all of that text that's been highlighted. Um, this is scale, and I can scale letters vertically or horizontally. Um, this is called a baseline shift, so if I need to move a letter slightly up or slightly down, I can do that. There is a faux italic here, so you can put an, an italic uh, form onto a letter if it doesn't have an italic natively. Um, the only trick to this, again, is to remember to highlight and then make your changes. You can also make changes to the color. You may have noticed that the fill box down here now has a letter in it. It's recognizing that we're in the type editor, and I'm going to double click on that. It's going to open that up, and then I can change that type to something else. A little bit later in the course, we're going to talk about saving these type styles. So once you set something up, uh, there are ways to save those as styles. And we're going to take a peek at that a little bit later on. In the next tutorial, we're going to cover threading text boxes together viewing text threading, and overflow text.